The woman in the video is 23-year-old flight attendant named Christine DeSera. She was reported to have been partying with 11 men in City Garden Grand Hotel in Makati, Philippines to celebrate the New Year's Eve. But right after the party, something happened and Christine was found unconscious by one of her friends in a bathtub. She was immediately rushed to Makati Medical Center but was pronounced dead on arrival. Police investigating Christine's death immediately assumed she was raped and murdered, that it was a rape slay case. However, suspects allegedly involved in Christine's death contradicted this conclusion, saying they were friends of Christine, were all gay, and would not do anything to harm her. What really happened to Christine? Christine Angelica De Sera was a flight attendant at Philippine Airlines. She comes from General Santos City, was the second of four siblings, and completed a communications degree cum laude at the University of Philippines Mindanao in Davao City. She danced, modeled, and joined pageants. Then in 2019, she moved to Manila to work as a flight attendant for Philippine Airlines, which later remembered her for being an upstanding and professional crew member. On December 31st, 2020, at 11.37 p.m., Christine called her mother, who lives in General Santos City, that she would go with her friends to City Garden Grand Hotel in Makati City to welcome the new year. Christine's friends Ramel Galito, Ray Angles, Louis De Lima, John De La Serna, and Clark Rapinen were the first to decide to rent room 2209. John De La Serna reportedly checked in as early as 1 p.m., followed by Christine 15 minutes later, while the others followed suit in the succeeding hours. Ramel had also invited Gregorio Gigo de Guzman, Elaine Chen, aka Valentin Rosales, Mark Anthony Rosales, Jamir Kunanen, and Edward Madrid. At 10 p.m., the group began eating and drinking when Ramel noticed that Christine drank strong alcoholic drinks, namely tequila and rum and coke. Meanwhile, John Paul Halili, who was reportedly the hotel manager, joined them later at 1.45 a.m. Christine managed to call her family at around 12.30 a.m. on January 1, 2021 to inform them about the ongoing celebration at the Makati Hotel and to greet them with a Happy New Year. A surveillance camera in the hallway of the 22nd floor of the hotel captured Christine and her group of friends coming out from room 2209 and going into room 2207 at 11.21 p.m. on December 31st, 2020. 17 minutes later, they returned to their room at 11.38 p.m. Christine was seen holding her shoes and a glass of wine. In an interview on a local TV show, one of Christine's friends, Elaine Chen, said they went to room 2207 because they have common friends there and wanted to check out some handsome men. There, they played hep hep hooray, and Christine was even the one that won the game. Afterward, they returned to room 2209 to welcome the new year. He said they were so happy. They did a lot of videos, pictures, and stories for social media, typical things they used to do all the time. Then he saw Christine video calling her family and said he even greet hi to her family. 2.50 a.m., January 1st, 2021, Christine and Elaine Chen returned to room 2207. While they were in room 2207, a room service man could be seen bringing an extra mattress to room 2209. 2.52 a.m., Christine and Elaine Chen came out from room 2207 and returned to room 2209 when Christine suddenly kissed him before entering their room. Some men can also be seen going in and out of room 2207 and going to room 2209. 3.15 a.m., Christine went out and went to room 2207. At 3.21 a.m., a man came out from room 2207 and went to room 2209. Christine's three friends then 
went to room 2207 and tried to bring her back to room 2209. At 4.13 a.m., Christine can be seen carried back by John Della Serna to their room since she went back to the other room again. She can be seen pressing the doorbell before going inside. 4.39 a.m. Christine and Elaine Chen came out from room 2209 and went to room 2207 again. The two went back to room 2209 at 4.52 a.m. with a smile on their faces. 5.05 a.m. Christine can be seen playfully running along with her friend who looked like Ramel Galito before entering room 2209. 6.23 a.m. The last ever footage of Christine alive. She was carried by Elaine Chen from room 2207 and brought her back to room 2209. She was even the one that opened the door of the hotel room. According to her friend Romel, he woke up at around 10 a.m. to use the bathroom. He saw Christine in the bathtub and woke her up to tell her that she should move to the bed to feel comfortable. Christine was still breathing then and had her eyes closed, Ramel said. Christine did not respond, and according to Ramel, she was gesturing with her hands as if she wanted him to leave. At least, that's what Ramel thought. He said her hands were resting on her belly. Thinking Christine is okay in the bathtub, Ramel puts a pillow and blanket for her to feel more comfortable. Then he went back to sleep. At 12 p.m., Ramel went to check on Christine once again. He wanted to tell her that it was time for them to leave so he could go back to work. That's when he realized Christine was not breathing anymore, and her lips turned purple. He panicked and called the rest of her friends. At that time, only five friends of Christine were left in the hotel because the rest already went home in the early morning. The five friends left were Ramel, Clark, Elaine Chen, John Delacerna, and Gigo. They immediately took Christine out of the bathtub. Then they started CPR while Gigo called an assistant from the hotel to get an ambulance. According to Clark, they were all terrified and panicked. After three minutes, the staff in the hotel arrived, saw Christine, and went back out to get a wheelchair. Elaine Chen said they struggled to transfer Christine in the wheelchair since the wheelchair provided had no leg assist and was too small for her. He also mentioned that Christine's leg was stiff straight and could not bend. This was probably because of the rigor mortis. Rigor mortis, which is cadaveric rigidity, starts developing within one to two hours after death and takes around 12 hours after death for complete development and remains in the developed stage for further 12 hours and disappears in the next 12 hours generally. Christine was brought to the hotel clinic where attempts to revive her failed. The hotel called for a rescue team from the Poblacion Barangay Hall, but none came. So Christine's friends and a hotel staff rushed Christine themselves to the Makati Medical Center. There, Christine was declared dead on arrival. Three of Christine's friends stayed with her along with her auntie. At 5 p.m., the hospital reported her death to the Makati City Police. On January 2nd, an autopsy was performed on her body at Rizal Funeral Homes in Pasai City at 9 a.m., led by medical legal officer, police major Michael Nick Sarmentio. Post-mortem findings on the incident through a medical legal report by the Southern Police District Crime Laboratory Office indicated that the cause of death was ruptured aortic aneurysm. According to the autopsy report, there is no indication Christine took illegal drugs, but 150 milliliters of blackish fluid was found in her stomach. The report did not mention that there was any semen found on her body. A presence of deep healed lacerations was also reported during the genital examination. These deep healed lacerations happened from the past, not the time prior to her death. Hence it's called deep healed lacerations. 
It also mentioned bruises on Christine's right hand, right thigh, knees, ankles, and right foot, and a linear abrasion on her right thigh. On her right hand, a superimposed needle puncture mark was also found. Strangely, on January 4th, the Philippine National Police told the media a separate statement on the incident, saying that they have already solved Christine DeSera's rape slay case, despite no indication of rape from the medical legal report. PNP Chief Police General DeBold Sinas said that they have already arrested three of the men they tagged as suspects, John Delacerna, Romel Galito, and John Paul Halili. A rape with homicide complaint was filed during the inquest proceedings at the Makati City Prosecutor's Office. Police ordered a manhunt for the rest of the occupants from rooms 2209 and 2207. Police Colonel Harold Depositar also said traces of semen were found in Christine's body. This was not previously indicated in the medical legal report. Depositar added that suspects may have used force. They are still men. They have men instinct, especially if they are under the influence of alcohol and maybe drugs. Especially. This information from the police led many people from the Philippines to rage. They quickly judged Christine's friends, including the men in room 2207. Netizens also criticized Christine for the clothes she had worn that night and for her binge drinking. On January 4th, the hashtags Justice for Christine De Sera, hashtag Stop Victim Blaming, hashtag Protect Drunk Girls, hashtag Men Are Trash, and hashtag Death Penalty trended on Twitter. Another scandal from the police is that Christine's body was embalmed first before the autopsy was performed. Embalming interferes with most of the toxicology studies. Police Major Michael Sarmentio admitted that he had Christine's body embalmed even without the consent of her family. In an interview with local news, Police Brigadier General Vincent Denau Jr. explained that it was newly crafted investigation guidelines under the coronavirus pandemic that caused Police Major Michael Sarmentio to embalm the body of Christine. Christine's family sought another autopsy to dispute the initial findings of authorities that she died of natural causes. The family spokesperson noted that the injuries on Christine's legs and arms would serve as enough evidence to establish a probable cause for rape. Christine's parents also filed a complaint seeking the immediate relief of Michael Nick Sarmentio for gross negligence and gross incompetence in the irregular and inaccurate preparation of Christine's medical legal report and death certificate. When friends of Christine were interviewed by a local TV show, they refuted any claims that Christine was raped. They explained that she vomited in the toilet bowl while kneeling and pointed it was maybe the reason she had bruises on her knees. They also mentioned that perhaps her climbing again and again to the bathtub is the cause of her bruises. According to them, Christine started vomiting from 3.30 to 7 in the morning. She was so drunk and very intoxicated that she was unable to change her clothes. They said that when she accidentally got vomit on her clothes and hair, they helped her clean herself in the bathtub and also helped her put on a robe to change. After that, they said, they finally went to sleep. Later, from time to time, Christine would run to the toilet bowl and vomit again and again. And they believed the linear abrasion on Christine's right thigh was caused when they struggled to put her in the wheelchair. Her thigh got squeezed by the sidebars of the wheelchair, they said. It was also reported that Christine's bruises were superficial and could not cause her death. Christine's mother did not buy this information. She strongly disagrees that her daughter died of natural causes. She said her daughter is young and healthy. She added that Philippine Airlines always do medical checkups with their employees. They would never let her work if she was not healthy, she said. She believed that her daughter was raped and murdered. 
In a CCTV footage video, Christine and Elaine Chen were seen kissing before they entered room 2209. Elaine Chen stated, Christine kissed him first, and he tried to stop her. Ramel also said that Christine used to lose control whenever she got drunk. In another CCTV footage video, Christine was seen carried by John Delacerna. He was asked by a host on a local TV show what happened at that time. John Delacerna said Christine was causing trouble in room 2207, so he and two other friends of Christine went to get her and brought her back to room 2209. When Christine went back again to room 2207, he went to get her again, and at that time, Christine suddenly laid down. He said if he did not carry her, she would fall, and he just wants to help her. Christine's friends stated there was never any rape that happened, and that they loved and really missed their good friend Christine. The National Bureau of Investigation, NBI, took over the case and went to gather evidence from room 2209. They also performed a second autopsy on Christine's body. They took tissue samples from her body and tried to retrieve fluids from her organs to find substantial evidence of rape and if there was any rape at all. However, pathologist Dr. Raquel Fortune told in a TV interview that it's too late for them to get this because by this time, her body has been washed, cleaned, and it's been five days. Not only that, Christine's body already has some embalming fluid. Somehow, the NBI managed to extract about 100 milliliters of urine from Christine's body. But unfortunately, I couldn't find any update or news about the results of the autopsy performed by the NBI at all. The information I found was just all about the NBI investigating and gathering evidence from room 2207 and a report that they autopsied her body and extracted this 100 milliliters of urine from her remains, but no news or update for the result, which is really weird. On January 7th, Dr. Marici Ramos, a friend of the DeSera family, told reporters that Christine's body had been submitted to a second autopsy, however, I don't know if this was performed by the NBI or their private pathologist before it was sent home, but the DeSera family decided that the findings will not be disclosed to the public. On January 27th, during the second hearing in the preliminary investigation, homicide was ruled out as the cause of Christine's death. The PNP reported to Makati state prosecutors their latest findings that a ruptured aortic aneurysm remains Christine's cause of death. The immediate cause of death was identified as cardiopulmonary arrest. The PNP medical legal report dated January 11, 2021 also showed that Christine's heart weighed 500 grams, which is heavier than the normal heart weight of 300 grams. This is a finding that supports Christine's apparent undiagnosed hypertension. Her heart is enlarged, and most probably it is due to her chronic hypertension, said the report prepared by PNP medical legal officer, Police Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Palmero, MD. Aneurysm is a defect in the arterial blood vessel wall causing dilatation. This condition is common among elderly patients due to atherosclerosis. However, this is also seen sometimes in younger age groups not associated with atherosclerosis, but due to other factors, his report said. In Christine's case, he said, there was continuous increase in her blood pressure within the aorta, which further weakened that defect and eventually burst. The medical legal report found that the various symptoms like weakness, nausea, and diaphoresis would explain why Christine was feeling weird and unlike the feeling of a hangover from previous drinking sessions. The loss of blood due to the ruptured aorta killed her within a few hours, the report said. It said that such kind of dilatation or defect on her aorta was a chronic condition that was present long before she died. It said that no alcohol or recreational drugs taken the night prior to her death could cause such a dilatation or defect in the aorta. 
Rape and or drug overdose will not result in the development of aneurysms, Palmero said in his medical legal report. Palmero also found that Christine had myocarditis or inflammation of the heart muscle, but said that this was not associated with her sudden death. On April 27th, Makati prosecutors cleared the 11 men of rape and homicide complaints. In a 19-page resolution, the prosecutors said they found no probable cause to charge the 11 individuals with rape. Christine was laid to rest at the Forest Lake Memorial Park in General Santos City.